Okay, so we are now at the last or the finale, the final chapter of the book of Revelation. So again, uh, if uh, this is your first time, okay, to, to watch this uh, series, uh, we would recommend, we'd like to recommend or we suggest that you watch, okay, part one of this series because it is very important for you to understand, no? Uh, okay, so today uh, we are on Revelation chapter 22. And we know that we're living in the last days. And so even our giving is very important. You see, uh, I always forget there is a, an institution in Israel that I started to uh, uh, connect with. But then uh, uh, there is something that I still need to uh, finalize with them so that we can also help I support the ministry in which they are, you know, uh, sending or teaching uh, uh, Jewish uh, converts to Christ in a uh, mini Bible school. So I believe, uh, you know, we want to be part of this. You know, we want to, uh, if we can, you know, establish a Bible school there, you know, for for people who will believe in Yeshua as the Messiah and to those who wanted to be trained. Uh, and uh, we want, you know, I want to be one of the facilitators if that is if, but we can't, okay? Especially in this present uh, crisis. So what we do is, you know, we plan to support ministries that are already existing in Israel, okay? That is why we wanted you to be part. We wanted you to give, you know, to be generous because, uh, you know, although we're not there, we're like we're there because we are partnering with existing uh, ministry of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So, friends, uh, but I cannot tell you <laughs> Which ministry is that? But uh, of course, uh, I it took time for me to do some consultation from our brethren, from our family who lives there. Okay, uh, from our network network of friends. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us start with the last uh, part of our series on the book of Revelation, which we entitled the end game story of God. So this is part 15. So imagine we have 15 episodes on this series. And, and every episode is very important. It is for the church to know. Okay, This is what the Lord desired ever since the time that He sent His angel to reveal the book of Revelation, you know, the vision that the Apostle John wrote, which what we have right now, the book of Revelation, okay? So guys, uh, although I, I did not make emphasis on, on the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowl, bowls, okay, or vials, uh, but you see, I want to focus on, on things that are important to believers and non-believers. Okay? So today, uh, Revelation 22, verse 1 says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. So I want you to uh, let your imagination <laughs> work. Okay? It says, verse 2, Down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. Imagine, <laughs> we've never seen a tree, okay, with 12 kinds of fruit, and monthly, you know, uh, it bears fruit, yields its fruit. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Verse 3, No longer will there be any curse. 
The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. There, there will be no more night. They will not need the light of the Lamb or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. So now you see, you know, you know the, the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 1 is now restored in Revelation chapter 22. Not the Garden of Eden in Davao City, okay? This is the real Garden of Eden where God himself will be there. That is why every, if there is a, a if there is a, minister who will claim he is the messiah and you know he, he has this you know the 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 ability to to restore the garden of eden but then you don't see god there okay <laughs> and it says here there will be no more night no need of the light of the lamp or light of the sun that's a false eden okay very clear because you, you if you read the scripture you know if People, you know, read the Bible and understand the Bible, you will realize that there's a lot of deception going on around the world right now. They are not biblical. They claim they're biblical, but they are not because it doesn't fit, okay, the, the scriptures. So you see, in the Garden of Eden, remember this, okay, listen. In the Garden of Eden, Okay, it says that there is what? A river. Water of life flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Meaning to say, in that Garden of Eden restored, there is what? You, there is a throne. The throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the middle of the city, there is what? The river. Okay. And then what? Tree of life bearing how many? Crops. Twelve crops of fruit. So, if somebody says to you, hey, the Garden of Eden is over there, oh, go see it. Go check if you see a river of the water of life. Go check if you see God and His throne is there. Go check if you see a tree bearing 12 fruits. Okay? <laughs> but you will see none. You will see none because, you know, it has not happened yet. Okay, so everyone who claims that, you know, the Garden of Eden is restored here on earth right now is a deception. Okay, because read Revelation 22, you'll understand that this has not happened yet. But a lot of Christians believe that the book of Revelation is already done. Well, well, read it. Okay, so let's continue. Verse 6 says, the angel said to me, these words are Trustworthy, trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. To show what? Who? His servants. Not just John the beloved, but to all the companion, the brethren of John. Okay? Meaning to say everyone who belongs to the church. The people of God, the family of God, everyone, all his servants, okay, must see, must hear, must know, must be aware of the things that must soon take place. That is in verse 6. Okay, this is the God's desire for us to know what will take place. Not just take place, what must soon take place. That's the last part of verse 6, Revelation 22. So listen up, friends. Uh, if the Bible declares uh, these are the things that must soon take place, how much more today? It's been like 2,000 years gap already since this was written by John at Patmos. So guys, we are almost there. We're almost there, okay? Now, verse 7 says, Look, 
I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. All right? Who said this? The Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am coming soon. Okay, verse 8 says, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. And the angel told John, worship God. Worship God or worship only the Lord your God. Now, verse 10, then he told me, the angel told John, do not seal up or do not close or do not cover the words of the prophecy of this scroll. Why? Because the time is near. So this book of Revelation is not supposed to be hidden somewhere. It's not supposed to be concealed. But we must make it known. This must be broadcasted. Everyone should know what's going to happen next. What's going to happen in the future. This is God's purpose for the book of Revelation. So, he says, do not close, do not seal up, don't close the words of the prophecy of this, this scroll because that time is what? Near. In other words, let it be known to people. Make sure that God's people are well informed. Make, let us make sure that people will hear this and not be surprised for the next events that will take place okay uh that's why you you can click share or you know share this link to your friends to your network of friends or to your uh, uh group uh group chat because that is our mission our mission is for everyone okay to be informed about the things that will happen in the book of revelation which is where we are living it uh, in, in okay now, verse 11 says, now this is very interesting. Verse 11, it says, Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. And that is what we're seeing right now, okay, at the verge of uh, this uh, this uh, timeline, which we call, which is identified by the scripture as the beginning of birth pains. It is happening, friends. It is happening very gradually, very slowly. But it will end out down the road. It's going to end up with apostasy. Even now, even before the pandemic, a lot of Christians, you know, have abandoned the faith. They have betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ by not obeying Him, by embracing other gods. Okay, so I hope they would repent because there is still time for people to repent. But let's go back to verse 11. It says, let, uh, let the one who does wrong or who is unjust or evildoer or wicked, let the one who does wickedness continue to do wickedness, to do wrong. Okay? And let the vile or let the impure, let the immoral, let the filthy. Okay, another version of the word is filthy. Let the filthy person continue to be filthy. Huh? Why is that? You see, I, many people ask the question, you know, if God is real, if God is uh, true, if God is everywhere, if God knows everything, if God can see everything, and if God is holy, and if God cannot tolerate sin, why is it that God is allowing sinful institutions to exist? Okay, the, the nightlife, the, there's all of this 
uh, the, the, the fruit of the flesh, you know, the, the things that they do, the adultery and all the immoralities and all the, the, the abortion, the, all of the, the uh, everything that is abomination in the sight of God. Why is he allowing it if God is real? Okay, friends, look at the scripture, read it for yourself. Verse 11 says, let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. And let the vile person continue to be vile. And I'm gonna, we are going to try to explain it, okay, later. Just, just stay with us. Okay? So, ag again, the big question here is why? Okay? Now, now, look. Let me give you an analogy first. Uh, like in a factory. You know, the, you know factories, uh, they, they produce items, right? So, in a factory, before the product is sent to the marketplace, okay, to be sold in the market, uh, it will go through a process called uh, 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 Quality control, right, right. Quality control, okay? So the same thing with Christians who attend church, you know, Christians attend church, read and heard a lot of sermons throughout their lives. There are many years of going to church, you know. But at the end, everyone will be tried for what they heard, okay? And they will come a time for them to show fruit. That they must show fruit. You remember the fig tree that Jesus cursed? <laughs> that didn't bear fruit because it was not that their season, that's the season for a fig tree to bear fruit. But then it was cursed. Okay? So, so Christians, you know, uh, we've been hearing the word of God for many years. And the, 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 the word was sown into our hearts. But time will come when that, those seeds will be tested okay and we must show fruit and then uh, this test that preliminary test okay is happening now yeah this is part of the test okay we believe in the lord jesus when he told us a prophecy remember in matthew 24 uh, luke 21 uh, mark chapter 13 okay the lord jesus christ you know told us a prophecy concerning the end times, the beginning of birth pains, which is the time before the tribulation to begin. Okay, so remember, like I said, okay, uh, uh, we are now in this timeline called the beginning of birth pains. And after this timeline, what comes next? Tribulation. <laughs> you, see, you see how close we are? Tribulation comes next. Now, let me explain. Uh, uh, can we show them Luke 21? Luke chapter 21, verse 7 to 11. Listen to this. This is very important. The disciples asked Jesus. He sa they said, Teacher, they asked, When will these things happen? What will be the sign that they are about to take place? Okay? The end times. Verse 8, The Lord Jesus Christ replied, Watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he. And the time is near. Do not follow them. Okay, so do you know someone who claims that he is the Christ? Okay, so th that's one of the examples. Okay, verse 9. Actually, there are a lot of people who thought uh, they are the Christ, you know, in, in other places, in other countries. You can browse the internet and, and look for people who claims to be the Messiah of today. A lot of them, okay? Um, but they're not because they do not fit in Bible prophecies. Because you see, when Jesus comes, what? how do we know that Jesus comes? The Bible says, He's going to come. Every eye will see. Okay. The skies will turn bright. Okay. And then he is coming with power and glory with his angels. You know, he's going to come. And that is not something that is secret. <laughs> Do you understand? Okay. So anyone who will claim he is the Christ and you don't see angels, you don't see power and glory, you don't see, you know, they are the false messiahs, okay? So don't believe them, all right? So the Lord Jesus Christ said, 
That is one of the sign. Verse 9. Okay, let's read verse 9. It says, When you hear of wars and uprisings or rumors of wars, okay, uh, do not be frightened. And of course, uh, these are what we call the threats, you know, uh, false wars, and it's not war, but they're, 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 it's like uh, they are like maybe expecting wars or. So, but it says, do not be frightened. These things must, must what? Must happen first. But the end will not come right away. Not yet. So, is this the, the end? No, not yet, not yet, not yet. All right. So, it says, this is just the beginning of birth pains in Matthew. Now, verse 10 says, then he said to them, the Lord Jesus said, nation will rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. Verse 11, there will be great earthquakes. What? Earthquakes. Next, famines. Next, pestilences in various places. And fearful events and great signs from heaven. Now, let's just go back to verse 10. The Lord Jesus Christ said, nation will rise against nation. Now, this is not the, the nation that we, we think about, okay? Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the nation here in Greek is ethne or ethnic, ethnic groups, okay? And the word kingdom against kingdom, kingdom in Greek is basilei, basilei, <laughs> it's hard to pronounce, but basilia. Okay, that's how it's pronounced, they said. Basilia. Which means kingdoms or sovereignty or political entities. Now, that's the, the nation that we believe, that we understand of today. So, when the, Jesus said nation will rise against nation, he was referring to ethnic groups. Meaning to say they are of the same tribe, same clan, same ethnic. Okay? So, there, it's like a civil war. Same blood, but they are waging war against one another. Okay, and then kingdom against kingdom. So this time, this going, this is the real nation, <laughs> nation against nation. But it will start with what? It will start with ethnic groups against ethnic. Same group. Are we seeing it in our days? Do we see this happening in our time? Okay, yeah. Okay? We, we see conflicts even in our country. Filipinos against Filipinos. We have that. Okay? But, uh, so, so today as we speak, we know that something is going on in, in, in the north, right? Uh, in the European country. Okay? So therefore, we're living in, in these days of uh, prophetic timeline spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are watching the prophecy, this prophecy, unfold before our very eyes. So if you're following the news, remember, remember, uh, I don't want to mention names of presidents, but remember the Afghanistan war. Okay? The Afghanistan war uh, last, last year. Okay? It's the Taliban rebel group against the Afghan government. Are they of same tribe? Yes. That is what we call uh, uh, nation against nation. Same tribe. And the, 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 the Taliban group okay, took over the government. Okay? Now, that's nation against nation. Now, now <laughs> all eyes on Russia and Ukraine. Okay, is that coming from the same tribe? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're the same people. They just divided the, you know, became this 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 group of people became a nation, and you know, but they they belong to same tribe. So this is still part of what the Lord Jesus Christ said: nation against nation. So what's next? China, Taiwan? Could be. Because they are what? 
same tribe. They came from same clan. They, they understand. I hope you understand. It's, it could be because of this prophecy, nation against nation, ethnos against ethnos. So it's the same ethnic group. So what do we see? What are we seeing right now? We're seeing this, that the prophecy is, you know, speedily fulfilled before our eyes, you know. And this is a wake-up call to Christians and non-Christians. Wake up, friends. Wake up, people. Wake up. It's time to wake up. Birth pain prophecies are taking place in our time, in this time, in this generation. And you see, it's time to get right with God. It's time to preach the gospel. It's time to get busy. Let's do everything we can do in our reach, in our power, in our influence to do right. Okay, To, to make an impact to people, to show them that the, who Jesus is. That we belong to the light. Okay? Hallelujah. Because we are called to be Jesus' extension on earth. We are called to be ambassadors. We are called to be light and salt of this world as His extension. Okay? So we have to get busy, friends. Okay? It's not time to just laugh. Oh, it's pandemic. So, you know, it's just right for me to stay home and just do nothing and just watch and... You are wasting time, friend, if you do that. Judgment is coming, and we are going to be judged according to what we have done. So don't waste time. And I'm, I'm so, I, I cannot, uh, it blows my mind to think about people have the pleasure of wasting time nowadays when we are almost at the last you see, the, the events, the, the timeline is we are now at the uh, birth pain uh, uh, timeline. The next thing is will is what? The tribulation. I, well, I understand that it will take years, but only the Lord knows when He will, you know, take out of the way, when the, when the restrainer will be taken out of the way. We don't know when, but when that happens, we know that the, the Antichrist will rise and will appear into the open and is going to do what he was destined to do. But you need to be in the right, uh, you know, you need to know this so that you know which side to choose. So, okay, guys, uh, going. Let's go back to our topic. So, all, all of what's going on right now are part of the beginning of sorrows. Okay, what is the beginning of sorrows? It is not the great tribulation. The beginning of sorrows, not the great tribulation, but refers to the time just preceding or just before the great tribulation or the tribulation. Okay. Uh, this is just so to other theologians say this is the beginning of sorrow is just a uh, what they call little or mini tribulation <laughs> whatever so uh, uh, again uh, uh, but this is not yet the tribulation okay but what we're seeing right now is what the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned as beginning of sorrows these are the events nation against nations okay and uh, <clears throat> so, um, all right, so the, it's making noises there. All right, so, <clears throat> so again, uh, let me remind you, you need to be aware of this. Not just you, but every Christian need to know what is said, what is spoken, what is revealed in the book of Revelation. <laughs> Okay, let them know. Share the link. And, uh, and, and, and know also that offenses will come. Okay? The beginning of sorrows is for Christians a test of patient endurance. Endurance. Because it is the beginning of events that will cause us grief. So, you know, get used to it. Are we relaxed? 
uh, will there be any trouble during this time of pandemic, uh, beginning of sorrows? Well, yeah. To Christians, a lot of, of these uh, struggles and pain will happen inside, in the heart, emotionally. Okay, although most of the people are living, you know, distant from one another because of the protocols, etc. But you see, there is a side effect to that. You know, a lack of fellowship, a lack of PDF, a lack of, a lack of you know, uh, will have side effects. And, and people will be offended. You know, offenses will come, betrayal will happen, and apostasy will also take place. So be careful whose voice you're listening to. It's very important, friends, because, you know, let me tell you, this test is not, uh, you know, this test is not a sprint race. It's not a short distance, uh, top speed kind of race, you know, but a marathon race. Marathon is a long distance race where your mind, your body, your emotion, your will, your 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 strategy, your 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 faith, <laughs> your will, your determination, <laughs> you know, are put to test. You know, whether am I going to finish the race or not, because it's a long run, especially the ultra marathon races. So this is also where our love, our faithfulness, loyalty, obedience, our ability to hear and obey God's voice are tested. Okay? Because time will come and, and, and has started to happen where even Christians, you know, their, their ability to hear the voice of the shepherds that God assigned over them are being tested. You see, you remember the sheep and the, uh, you know, uh, the shepherd and the sheep and the goats thing and, you know, th the difference between the sheep and the goats, you know. So, whose voice is governing your heart? Is it God? Is it the Word of God or yourself or the world? So, you know, try to make an assessment. Examine yourselves. Very important, friends. You see, if you if if the voice of God is if the word of God is the one governing your heart, then the book of Revelation is a big deal for you. But if God, His word, is not the governing script in your heart, then the book of Revelation and the rest of the Bible doesn't affect you in any way. You don't care. Okay, you can continue on sinning. You can continue what you want to do. You're not affected. No conviction. You're calloused in your heart. You know why? Yeah. Because God is not the, the, the voice of God, the word of God, the truth is not the governing script in your heart. That's not your core belief. Or maybe you are too selfish that you only listen to yourself, your desire, what you want. And so you are the God of yourself in that case. That's why I ask, who, whose voice is, the governing, is governing your heart? That is very important, friends. But remember this, whether you believe the word of God or not, what the Lord said <clears throat> will come to pass. And they are getting fulfilled in, in, in our days Okay, now it did not only men now Jesus did not only mention pestilences or pandemics. Okay, remember we read to you a while ago, Jesus said, uh, you know, that there will be what? Pandemics or pestilences. But he also mentions this famines. Okay, read verse 11. It says, verse 11, verse 11. There will be great earthquakes. Yeah, I cannot forget 2018. Almost every week, every month of that year, we had strong earthquakes. We've experienced that here in our island, okay, of Mindanao. And, 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 and uh, so there will be great earthquakes. It says famines. What's, what's a famine? Uh, scarcity of food, that food shortages, and pestilences or pandemics. So meaning to say there's going to be pandemic, different, you know, uh, uh, 
what's that variety uh, variants <laughs> okay and then you know now it looks like there is there's none but maybe after the election it will uh, there will be another one <laughs> coming another wave i don't know anyway you'd be the judge so anyway um there will be pestilences but the thing is this remember this famines okay now since this is the lord jesus christ you know who who gave this prophecy well, what do you think? Will this happen? Hmm? So, verse 11 about the scarcity of food or for food shortages. The question is, this is the question now that we have read that Jesus said in his prophecy, there is going to be food shortages. My question to you right now is, what are you doing now to prepare you see, we were unprepared for the pandemic. The world was shocked, you know, that it, it uh, spread rapidly around the world. So you see, all these prophecies came to pass already, but it keeps on repeating, going on cycles, but on a greater scale. Now this is global, okay? So thing, the thing, my friend, is that what are you doing right now? Or maybe some of you are still dreaming that everything will go back to normal or oh, dreaming that, you know, these catastrophes will not happen. Now, if you're listening to yourself than, than God, than the Word of God, then you're foolish and slow to understand that the Word of God is true, okay? And that the uh, unconditional prophecies will come to pass and no one can put a stop to it from happening. Okay? Prayers, intercessions, prayer and fasting will not stop. No stoppage for the unconditional prophecies to take place. It will surely come to pass. And, and, um, but, so are, are we not going to pray anymore? No, 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 no. What I meant is this. The main events that the Bible has prophesied, prophesied will come to pass. But we can pray for the brethren. We can pray for the church. We can pray for, for those who need Jesus that they may have an encounter to hear the gospel. That we can do. Amen? Amen? So we, we pray, but do not pray that, you know, Oh, wars will not happen, Lord. Lord, do not. No, no nation against nation, kingdoms against kingdoms. What? So you're now against. You remember, Peter? And Jesus said, well, the Son of Man will be betrayed. They will, you know, kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. And Peter said, no, Lord, no. Peter rebuked Jesus and he said, that will not happen over my dead body. And what did Jesus, uh, in reply, Jesus said, Jesus told Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You see, you don't have the mind of God. You understand the mind of God is that God wrote a story. This is a story. It will come to pass. Now, if you pray against unconditional prophecies, then you are against the will of God. You are against the purposes of God. Don't do it. Don't waste your don't waste your energy praying against unconditional prophets. Instead, pray for the family of God. Pray for the brethren that they will be kept safe through the war, through the trial, through the crisis. That they will, uh, that they will be taken to or away from danger zones. Okay, uh, that that there will be food. Uh, or food will be provided for them. And that, uh, you know, things like that. That we can pray about. Especially that in those uh, trying times, people will get to know Jesus. That they will cry out to God and Lord help because we cannot, you know, there's nothing we can do. That you see, in those times where they have nothing to hold on, we pray that they will seek God and find God. God. You understand? So that is very important. Our prayer uh, has a, a, a role to play. But 
you know, going against the will of God, the plans of God, what he prophesied in the Bible. That's why we want you to know the book of Revelation so that you will not be ignorant, you will not be praying against what God declared to ha declared in his uh, book. Okay? Uh, so, get in line with God. Always align yourself to the will of God. So, Okay, let me read, read to you Isaiah 46, 9 to 10. Okay, so let, let me, let us, I want to refresh you, church. Isaiah 46, verses 9 to 10. Okay, remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God. Okay, this is God, you know, saying this. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Verse 10. I will make known the end from the beginning. <laughs> I will make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times to what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Okay, that clear? Is that clear? His purpose will stand. The word of God or God's word, the prophetic uh, end time events or the, what has been prophesied, God's purpose will stand. So now about the famine thing, this is why we're, we've been so busy you know i've been busy teaming up with you know of course with with other people collaborating with other um successful uh, the prof those who are experts in in farming you know you know we we learn from them from other countries you know like you know we get tips from israel korea Vietnam, uh, some, you know, the Asian, you know, what works for us, we belong to Asia. Uh, Philipp, Philipp, some Filipinos, we have a lot of coaches we, 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 to, to help us to, 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 to answer some of our questions. And we do a lot of experiments how to do urban farming. Okay, so this is, this is why we're, we're busy learning, experimenting, so we can teach others. How to, how to do urban farming and that no one will go hungry when famine comes. Okay, what do I mean by that? I, I mean uh, self-sustainability, like an off-grid thing where what if you cannot buy or sell? What if you cannot buy fertilizers? What if you cannot buy seeds? What if, you know, all the what if. What, what if you start... <laughs> To work on it now while there is time. For God is giving us time. Right? Because what if the famine will come soon? So you see, be like Joseph. You remember Joseph uh, in, in Egypt? Seven years of plenty and then what follows is seven years of famine. Seven years of drought and and, and, and no crops who can will be produced, uh, no food. So that's food scarcity, shortages. But wisdom, he prepared seven years. For seven years he prepared. Wow, that's wisdom. But you know, if you think when they started to prepare, they they sound crazy. So, Joseph, what are you doing? Why are you building all of this, you know, uh, big, uh, it's like a silo. silo, right? It looks like a silo where, you know, they can store uh, the, the, the grains, you know, all the source. The, you know, for people living in those days, it's crazy. You look foolish. You look stupid. Why are you doing this? A lot of it. But you see, after, I mean, when, when famine hits, he fed nations. That fed nations. A lot of people survived because of wisdom from God. Hello? Look at Noah. Noah, when he was building the ark, 
he was, oh, this guy is crazy. You know, he, why are you doing this? There's no flood, there's no rain, no storm, nothing. Whoa. But when it happened, whoa, now look who's crazy. Okay? Friends, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord Jesus Christ said there will be pandemics, there will be pestilences, but he also mentioned there will be what? Food shortages or famines. With an S. Read it. With an S. W where is that again? Luke chapter 21 verse 11. Wow, I, 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 where is that? Oh. I lost my notes. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, food shortages. All right? So, guys, uh, that's why uh, we want to encourage you. Listen, uh, we're regrouping. You see, the, the church, the setup before the pandemic is different from the setup after the pandemic. We call it the <clears throat> post pandemic setup. And I believe the Lord has a plan. So we encourage you, uh, Maranatha family, uh, n not the Maranatha members who belong to our churches in, in the provinces, etc., but the ones who used to come to Victoria Plaza, to, to uh, Cinema 4. Uh, we encourage you to join us with our PDF. And we'll be teaching you also about, we're going to regroup and we'll be teaching you also about uh, the basic urban farming. And uh, if possible, you know, it, we're going to do some, you know, uh, you produce your own fertilizers, you produce your own, you know, everything is from raw materials. Okay. So we right now I am doing my first batch on uh, organic uh I am integrating this, you know. I mean, I'm like shifting, trying to do some uh, experimenting on uh, fermented juices, you know. If you use it in a high, high hydroponic system, will it work? Um, what are the disadvantages, the downsides, you know, things like that. There's, there's so, so much details to it. And um, I want you to... Um, I want you to, um, okay, but we're not going to do, do uh, wait, wait, wait. So to make the long story short, just join our PDF. PDF is prayer, discipleship, and fellowship. We're doing that. And after this online service, which is the first service, um, we are going to go there to our second service, and the third service will be in Turil. So I have three services today. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, we will share our hearts and plans in our PDF meetings. Um, and so uh, more details, um, announcements will be in our PDF meeting in Agdao. So if you want to know where, you, you know, you miss us already, you want to see us in person, you're not afraid of uh, germs, you can... Because you know that you know the Lord will heal you and you'll be immune. You can you know contact your uh, our home group leaders. They know where. Okay, so God bless you guys. So okay, to finish it, to finish this, or continuing with the question we raised from verse eleven that says, "Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong, and the filthy, the vile, continue to be vile." The one who does right continue to do right. The one who let let the holy person continue to be holy. Now here is why. Let's read the parable of the weeds. This is very important. So you understand and you, you don't get offended to the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, oh Lord, you know, that is not nice of you. Uh, that's not good, Lord. And you allow them to, you know, you know that's why my prayer is that Lord discipline them. So that they will repent. Because, you know, godly sorrow will lead a person to repentance. That's from the book of Corinthians. So that's my prayer. Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Understand this. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. 
But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? The, an enemy did this. The owner replied. Okay. And um, the servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? Okay. Pull up those, the weeds. The owner said, No. He answered, Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Of course, it, the, the wheat will also be affected because they are sharing on same soil. You know, they, they have roots uh, in the same ground, on the same soil. So if you uproot the weeds, it will also hurt the, the wheat. It will damage the root of the weed. Okay? Uh, of, the, of, the, yeah, of the wheat. So... So the, 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 the owner said, no, don't, don't, don't do that, okay? Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Verse 30, listen to this. Verse, verse 30 says, let both grow together until the harvest, until the end of the age, okay? At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in, in bundles to be burned. Okay, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. So if you understand that parable, now the question, why? The why question in verse 11 is already answered. So I hope that that answered our why question, right? Now, if you don't show signs of one like that of a wheat, then you are a weed. <laughs> Sorry to say that, but it's true. So my advice to you is simple. So what, what can you do? This is very simple. You must be born again. You must be born again because if you are born again, you will be able to hear the conviction of the Holy Spirit and so change your ways and your doings and so, you know, uh, uh, you will show good fruit. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. Because you are born in the Spirit. Okay? That is why Romans 8, 14. Okay? Romans chapter 8, verse 14 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Okay? Why? Because they are led by the Spirit. So if you're not led by the Spirit, you cannot say you're a child of God. You may believe, you may think, you may profess you're a Christian, but actually you're not. Because the proof you're a Christian is for you to have the Holy Spirit and you have an ongoing relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and His Spirit in you. Okay, you know that His conviction is going to be unbearable when you are living a sinful life. Okay, you cannot sleep at night if you are, you know, you cannot sleep with sin because the Holy Spirit is holy and he will tell you, hey, repent, repent. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the work of the Holy Spirit. He is going to reveal to you things. So friends, if you don't have that, if you're not experiencing that, if that's not a normal thing in your life, you may not be a Christian right now. You, mu you might need to hear the gospel and repent of your sins and be saved. You must be born again. John 3, 7. Jesus said, do not be surprised if I tell you, you must be born again. So it's not a suggestion from the Savior himself. He said, you must, must be born again. It's a must. Okay? So let's, let's finish this. Verse 12. We're almost done. Look, I am coming soon, the Lord Jesus Christ said. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. You see, that's why I asked earlier, what are you doing right now? Okay? What are you doing right now? That could impact, that could, you know, influence people, that could bless other people, that, that, that would give glory to God. What are you doing? Okay, he said, uh, 
I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So it is going to end there. So where are we right now in Bible prophecy? We are in between beginning and the end. <laughs> okay, before the end will happen, before it will end to Christ Jesus our Lord, His coming, His second coming, these things are going to happen. Wars, okay, wars, nation against nation. Uh, kingdom against kingdom. So after nation against nation, same tribes, what, what's, what will happen next? It's going to be what? Kingdom against kingdom. Political entities. This represents the real nation that we know of against nation. So it's going to end up with what? Okay, I don't want to uh, talk about that yet, but I hope you understand what I meant. What the Bible meant by kingdom against kingdom. So this is not Tri same tribe uh, war but it's <laughs> different nations okay against each other so uh, it says blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city oh wow amazing hallelujah I'm so excited but listen up if you refuse Jesus, if you don't like Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, you don't want to be born again, you don't want to live a, 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 a righteous life, you don't want to repent of your sins, read verse 15. It says, Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Where? Outside. That is their place. And what, what does the word outside mean? This could be, in, you know, this could be the interpretation to the place outside the city. Let's read Isaiah 66.22 because this is one of the scriptures that we can find in scriptures, you know, nearest to the word outside. Outside. Okay, what do you see outside? Okay, why, why does it say outside? Is it still outside and they're doing well? They, they, do they look good? Are they okay? Uh, are, they, are they people who just can't get inside the city but still they are there outside enjoying their time in the garden? No, no, no. I don't think so. Because when the Bible says outside are the dogs, let's read Isaiah 66 verse 22. It says, as the new heavens and the new earth. So this is talking of the same thing with Revelation 22. So is Isaiah 66. It says, as the new heavens and the new earth that I will make, that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure, referring to Israel, from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath or Shabbat to another, all man mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. Verse 24, and they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched and they will be a loathsome. Okay, detestable or disgusting to all mankind. So these people, when they go out and look, what do they see? Okay, the dead bodies of those who have rebelled against God. Those who does not submit to God, those who hate Jesus, those who refuse to believe in Jesus, those who refuse to come to life, those who decided not to be subject to the King of Kings. These people will not enter the holy city of God, but they will be outside and they will be tormented with worms that eats them and will not die. A fire that burns that will not be quenched. Can you imagine that? It's going to be forever and ever and ever. That's why, you know, we encourage you not to receive the mark of the beast. You see, you can be persecuted, tormented for a while, but what is that compared to this kind of predicament where those who chose not to submit to the Lord Jesus Christ will be tormented forever and ever and ever and ever, in which torment no one can save them. Okay? So fear the one who could 
kill both the body and the soul. But this kind of death is different because it's forever. Okay? So verse 16, take note of verse 16. It says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life. You see, I, I remembered uh, the song earlier in our worship time. You know, uh, we say Maranatha. Okay, what's that song? Yeah. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. You know, it's, it's like the bride crying out with this passion. You know, Lord, come. Come, Lord Jesus. In fact, those who have the, uh, the, this eager desire for Jesus to come will be rewarded. There's a specific reward for those who are eager to see the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Okay. So say, we say, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come. So the Spirit and the who? And the bride say, come. And it says in verse 18, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. So please do not add. Okay, do not add to what was spoken in this uh, prophecy. Verse 19 says, And if anyone takes, a, takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this scroll. Verse 20 he who testifies to these things say, meaning say the Lord Jesus Christ, say, yes, yes. Okay, he says, yes, what? I am coming soon. So to say to you today that Jesus is coming soon is correct. It's absolutely right. He is coming soon. Because he is the one who said that, that he is coming soon. And the church responds in verse 20, second part or last part says in verse 20, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. That's why we say, Lord, come. Verse 21 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. And so, guys, the Lord is coming soon to reclaim what is rightfully His. You see, God, the God of Israel, made the heavens and the earth. Therefore, He legally owns everything. And therefore, He is king and the rightful ruler and the rightful owner over all his creation. He is the sovereign Lord. In short, God is the maker. God is the owner. And God is the rightful ruler. He's going to come very soon. Okay? And, uh, and, and that's why he said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. S ending says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty, He is going to come. Uh, uh, one last, uh, Isaiah 42.8. Isaiah 42.8. The Lord said, I am Yahweh. That is my name. Now, in other English versions, it says, I am the Lord, like Adonai. That is my name, but that's not the original translation. You must understand that He has a specific name, not just, Lord or a function or a title. He says, I am Yahweh. You know, every uh, every character 
in those uh, name, okay, in, in Jewish, has a meaning. That is why when it says, I am Yahweh, Yahweh, that is my name. That's so personal to God. That is my name. So this only points to one group uh, or, or this, this originates, the, he being known as the God of one group, the chosen people called Israel. What I meant by that is that we must all submit to the God of Israel because the God of Israel is the one and true living God. And he said, my name is Yahweh. Okay? So if a certain religion has a different name for their God, then that's not him. Okay? Again, let me read to you. Isaiah 42, 8 says, I am Yahweh. That is my name. Okay, I will give I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. So this God, the God of Israel, hates idols, hates pagan beliefs and practices. Okay? The past events, verse 9, the past events have indeed happened. Now I declare new events. I announce them to you before before they occur. That's why when we read to you Isaiah 46, 9, uh, uh, Isaiah 46, verse 10, it says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. So friends, ladies and gentlemen, again, again, Everyone need to know, every Christian must be informed about what will take place because that is what God desires uh, 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 for His people to do, is to share this, to share the message, okay, so that His people will not be surprised, so that His people will act accordingly, will prepare themselves, their hearts, their spirits, their families, okay? We, everyone, we will prepare them, Hallelujah. You must understand, friends, that, that in this time, you know, ma mainly the, the purpose of the book of Revelation. Oh, I want to, if, if I may, please, uh, before I, I say goodbye to you for this uh, episode, uh, Revelation 1. I mean, I, I just can't take this uh, uh, out of my mind. Uh, Revelation chapter 1. Let me uh, allow me to look for Revelation chapter 1. Okay, y you read uh, verse 9. Okay, th th this is why God sent his angel to reveal to John what must soon take place. So that John, through John, you know, through the writings of John, through what John witnessed in the vision, he would, you know, uh, deliver the message to the churches, to the churches, okay? Now, he said, Revelation 1.9, he said, I, John, your brother, and what? Companion in what? Sufferings and what? The kingdom and what? Patient endurance, that is what? That is ours in Jesus. It's ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos, so and so. So, what do we mean by this? That there are three main things included with our what? Union in Christ. When we become part of, 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 of the body of Christ, when we unite with the Lord Jesus Christ, three things you must consider. Count the cost. It says suffering, but you'll be part of God's kingdom. Okay, uh, God's family, and but there will also be time of suffering and patient endurance. So it is clear that the church will go through it, and the Lord doesn't want the church to be surprised about it. That is why we 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 you know we plan this. That's why we did this series on the Book of Revelation. We have fifteen parts. <laughs> okay. 15, okay? I think that's the simplest way to uh, 
share it. So please, for those of you who have not uh, watched the whole series, please start with part 1 all the way to part 15 again. Because, well, yeah, it's in the description below, be, the link. Because, you know, it's it will help you prepare and have the right mind, okay, and act accordingly. And that's why we also told you that family why we're very busy because we see things are coming remember i think 2018 the earthquakes and 2019 i already told you about the persecution ready church about to be read to be prepared and, and they happened in 2020 and, and now we're seeing this the next thing will be another prophecy coming but we don't know when but I hope it will be like the time of Joseph. He had seven years to prepare. But you know what? Uh, Christians, let us be wise. Let's learn from history. And now is the time to act. But you cannot act accordingly if you do not know the Word of God. So friends, ladies and gentlemen, the ending, the end of the story, the victory belongs to us in Christ for as long as you are faithful as long as you will endure as long as you abide remain in Christ okay and not betray him not abandon Jesus not deny him okay through those those the the trying times you'll be safe okay um we love you and i think i uh, have <laughs> yeah it's okay some other time okay so guys uh please review this series maybe you missed some you know you missed some uh chapters please go back and 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 also if you're blessed share it with your friends we don't have a a motive to be you know, to become famous, to be known by this. But, you know, it's very clear. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to do. He wants His people to know the upcoming events. Before you will watch it online, before you will read it in the, uh, in the news, okay, um, in the mainstream media, okay, read it here in the Bible. Okay, so God bless you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so thankful that now, finally, we have come to an end to this uh, topic, to our series on the book of Revelation, the end game story of God. And we believe, Lord, that this is the final story you have in the Bible. And it's a long one. And it's, it, it's a happy ending. And there, there, there will be rough times, times where, you know, we will feel sorrowful that we, things, events, happenings that will cause us grief in our hearts. But that was prophesied too, that this is the beginning of sorrows, times where, you know, we will experience all, all sorts of hurts and offenses and griefs and sorrows and things like that i pray lord that your people will have your grace to overcome and and that lord i pray that you lord that you would intensify that you make us become more sensitive to the leading of your spirit to hear the conviction of the holy spirit inside us and to to walk with you to to flow with, you know, Lord, to act accordingly, to respond to Bible prophecies, Lord, so that we may act accordingly. And that, Lord, we don't want, you know, we don't want people to to, to abandon, to, to apostate, to, to fall away, to, to abandon their faith, Lord. We don't want that to happen. But we cannot stop Bible prophecies from happening. So, Lord, help us to control our heart lord uh, 
heal us through times of pain. But Lord, we pray that your people will be restored. Those who will somehow slip along the way, Lord, we pray that they would repent and be back on the right track. We pray, Lord, while there's time, Lord, just like Peter, when he denied you three times, but Lord, he repented. He, he was restored. So I pray for restoration of those brethren, of those people who need restoration right now. Let them be restored emotionally, physically, especially spiritually in their faith. And so God, thank you for your anointing. Bless your word. Let your name be glorified, not us. May you increase, Lord. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and forever. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Okay. And all of God's people say, Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Okay? So God bless you. And to some of you, see you in our next service in our PDF, which is what? Prayer, Discipleship, and Fellowship. Fellowship is very important and we are regrouping and we will be announcing our activities, you know, our vision in our uh, face-to-face meetings. Okay, so God bless you everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And we hope to see you again next week. And uh, we promise and we'll do our best by God's grace to share online everything that is relevant or significant to our Christian faith, to what's uh, going on and what we should be doing. Okay, so we will continue to bring awareness so that people may continue to do the right thing to, to, you know, to, to worship Jesus to follow Jesus, grow and bear fruit. Okay? So God bless you everyone. Bye for now. See you again.